that sounded awesome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so I'm Paul from the Studio Rats today um, at the NAM show and I've got Thomas Bluke here with what everyone's asking for because we put a, um, a survey out, what we should come and see first and everyone said Ambex. So when's it coming out? It's a question that everyone wants to I know. I know, this year when I'm finished. When you're finished. I, I, have, I have to be honest about the whole thing. Yeah. This product is the end of a journey yeah. of my whole career. Yeah. It is like I've been designing tube amps, modeling amps, transistor amps, yeah. and I tr I get, and I prove this in a minute to you, power amp saturation from tube amps at any volume without any side effects. The yeah. dream of my tone creation. And I get so many other things like the delays things and blah, blah, blah. I have to make sure that this all analog circuitry that uh, recreates or creates amps is maxed out because I have to freeze that and I can only supply future software for different amps and pedals yeah. and things but if I miss something out now I will regret it and I am a perfectionist and I want that was my promise uh, to be able to have an amp, the MX, being a platform to recreate any amp that I have seen, just like the digital guys, but fully analog. Yeah. And I also have the original tone controls of the amps that I can recreate or model in the analog domain. Um, and this kind of complexity takes its time. I have, it with myself and my team, signed off the vintage side of it and I have, uh, I'm totally happy with that. This is done. Now I will dive into the high gain modern metal side a little bit. Yeah. It's doing this already, but I need to do a few more M's to have a proof of concept or maybe do slight little changes to get into all the details that these guys need and want. And this is finished when it's finished. It's. We have all the recipe parts, components, and uh, ideas, yep. uh, but we need to do it. We have to do a few more amps just to have the certainty that this amp is doing what I promised to myself and the rest of the world. So you're going to do, and as opposed to doing what you did before with coming out with the Mercury Edition and then the, the and, uh, yeah, then the Iridium, yeah. you, you want everything just in one thing as opposed yeah. to coming yeah. out. Okay, because I, and I'm a little bit confused with the whole effect side of this as well because I really want to know what is, is it can you put the effects before the, the amp system or, or afterwards both, both. You can do both okay okay I have an analog Wawa slot and yeah. of course since it is analog but digitally controlled I can have tons of different Wawa's in that slot oh understand yeah so there will be a wing expansion for the x-wing uh, for controller for your Wawa pedal or maybe even two for Wawa and volume um, it's all already mechanically designed, yeah. um, so the whole thing becomes your pedal board. You don't need the pedal board anymore. So it's just one unit to take away. So, but this was the first slot, the Wawa. Then there's another fully analog slot, which is the boost section. On that boost section, I can promise to have Range Master boosters. I have any kind of boosters like Booster is a piece of cake for me, you yeah. know, uh, because they are, what what are they offering? They are uh, offering the frequency changes uh, and some style of uh, saturation, but with not too many stages. Right. So that kind of slot is versatile enough to, to do most boosters that I know. I would say maybe every booster that I have in my collection. Um, there might be an exception, but at this point, I don't see it. So, so this is the boost. Uh, this section is completely analog. It's completely all... analog. Yeah. And by the way, in that same section, there is a compressor slot in, in within the boost circuitry that I can activate and combine with the boost yes. pedals, and that uh, the curve of the compressor, the compressor is analog, but the curve is determined by the digital brain. So I can, I can even recreate different kind of compressors because a compressor doesn't change the EQ that much. I could change the EQ if I wanted to. I have all these, but I can have the curve of a compressor, different optocoupler style, 
to modern style and even like the combination of two compressors I could digitally um, analyze and combine into one final curve awesome. because if you stack two compressors well you have to stack two curves and that results in one curve because it's only one signal yeah. so that's also possible in that second slot and is everything is everything series or is or you have a parallel at, at this point it's serious okay. okay then the third slot is the drive pedal slot we are talking about pedals that have tone controls that have more gain stages or just one i can you know again it's fully analog but it's so flexible that i can recreate the pedals that I have in my collection, which means basically everything. As I always say, maybe there's an exception, but I don't see it at this point. Um, so that slot gives me another uh, pedal option. And of course, they can all run at the same time. You know, they're, they're kind of part of my internal pedal board, so to speak. Fourth slot is the option for digital stuff that I have uh, inside in my own processor and uh, this fourth slot I call special for the future I can do some like drop pedals like you know detune or metal yeah. won't go all the way up to low A or what, what not you know stuff that can only be done on the digital domain okay. so and on that slot I can always decide if I have uh, the signal got converted uh, to the digital domain and back 100%, which is needed for, for the tuning stuff. Yeah. Um, or if I have the dry signal all analog still. So that's that's the that's the puristic approach for me. I try to be as analog as possible uh, and do it non-compromised, just like you would do with the best pedals and the best amp combination and switching, blah, blah, blah. So that's all possible here. This was the fourth slot. Then we have the modulation slot, which means there's a chorus, later phaser, stuff like this. Uh, you know, like so, some phasing or flanging, or, and this is all pre DM, so it's all your pedal board kind of. Um, the next is a delay. Oh, but, oh sorry, is it, is the, is, is the, is, is your modulation stuff, is that analog or digital? Is that? The modulation itself yeah. is digital. Right. But the signal, the dry signal, stays analog. Right. So the modulation is modeled, uh, is mixed on top, the, uh, on top of the analog dry signal. Okay. So, next slot is delay. So there's a pre, uh, um, a, a slot before the amp section that is delay for your whatever slapback amp echo or yeah. my, my beloved uh, whatever reflex here. <laughs> Just, that sounds awesome. Yeah, this, this is basically this is my using Kettner reflex. Uh, if you if you look at this uh, reflex and reflex boost, the reflex is a replica of a um, um, Echoplex, yeah. the first generation, the one that with, has real tubes. And for to to get that pedal, I'm using the boost stage because I wanted that 100% authentic tube stage of that echo in front of my amp. And then I have the modulation going on, and this is like digital, but yeah. it sounds so analog because the tube stage, the tube saturation is done analog, and the, the reverb flutter and all that stuff is done digitally. Before the amp still. Yeah. That sounds great because it isn't the the, the delay is not crapping out. No. So, so that's great. Yeah. So this is all before the amp, and then uh, we were 
at the delay slot. So after the delay slot, we have a reverb slot before the amp. Oh, okay. So yeah. and this all goes on at the same time. Be a surf, be a surf type guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Spring reverb type. Yeah. Then we have the amp section with like all the amps it will ship with our well, the amp. Same, is it the same amps that yeah. are in the great? Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. It's our amps and the option to up, update it to other amps like this one, for instance, is. Uh, wait a minute, this one here is my vintage yeah. on, on the Mercury. Uh -huh. So that's just like a vintage from the Mercury. Um, and of course I can use a boost here now like... So, Sounds great. Now I press this button yeah. and I'm having a new amp here, which is now a 50 watt flexi, my own 50 watt yeah. flexi from yeah. 1960, which was kind of the inspiration for my vintage yeah, amp, but now saying. we can maybe listen to the distance. Ah. So it's just been towed off by the NAM, please. had a noise police here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is like talking level, yeah. power amp saturation, and it does all the feedback like. Okay, and now this amp, since it's all power amp saturation, it's not the same like on the M1. This is similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. This I is remember. now 100% authentic. Yeah. What is happening on the 50 watt plexi at this low volume? Yeah. But so now. I put the boost back on, yeah. and then what I get is like, of course, more gain. Endless gain, okay? And we can talk over that, you yeah. know? It's like, <laughs> Gary Moore could have played a talking <laughs> volume. <laughs> and now the thing is, I turn down the volume. And this, right. this is only possible with a cranked power amp because the boost, um, well, the amp is cranked, so there's a lot of, uh, the, the, the main saturation came from the power amp stage first. When I uh, get the boost on, the boost pushes the front end as well. Yeah. So I get a nice cascaded gain stage. It's not like I have one stage to have doing it all. And um, since the power amp stage is here, and there's a lot of little stages in front, and I do the old school way, just like having the crank marshal and the pedal in front of it, I will saturate the, the first stage, the second stage, and, and the power amp stage. Right. And this gives you that kind of dynamic that I believe no modeler can ever do. Yeah, I agree. And, Completely and it, agree. it's like... And that literally is like bedroom volume. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. Ah, oh, that's great. So <laughs> this is why it takes so long because yeah. to to max that out, it took me three months last year. But now this is what I said at the beginning. Yeah. I am totally happy because this exactly this I was looking for my whole entire life. Because now I can get the the crazy good tones from the original tube amps at any volume. And I can have my own collection. My, I have my amps, my own collections always with me and the collection will grow amp-wise. Yeah. Talking about the signal part, yeah. we just came to the amp section. So uh -huh. after, after the amp section, we have again a modulation, yeah. a delay and a reverb. They can all be different from the three pedals and these are stereo. So, if I want to, I can now have my ping-pong delay, 
I can have a modular delay as well, but you can you could have like a ping pong stereo and a stereo reverb and a stereo chorus and whatever. So so there's two power amps in, inside here. No, it has ah. only one power amp. Okay. But it has five outputs. So the reason for that is like I ca call two of them the main outs because usually you go on stage and you I mean if you can afford two channels you go out stereo and you have your ping sure. pong. So yeah. I, 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 I like this kind of modular uh, concept. So the smallest thing is just to have a guitar and this yeah. and, a, and a mono guitar cabinet with you. The, yeah. the old school way. I will probably play that for the rest, let, for, at least for the next few years. I, I see that. So yeah. And then uh, this makes the most compact uh, and lightweight setup. Yeah. What happens? If you want to play stereo, you can have that stereo either. You, you could maybe do a Jeff Beck style. Hey, can you send me some effects on the monitor? And there you use the outputs, the line outs for the PA. And they send you just the effects on mono monitors. You have the dry signal of the amp there. You can assign the effects to any output. Right. So you can assign it to the mono output, to the speaker, what I have done here. Yeah. Or you, you make your wet, dry, wet system. Yeah. Or you use full range, whatever. And in, on each of the five outputs, you can have a speaker simulation. Right. Ah, so, okay. Which means I can do any combination. Wet, dry, wet, stereo, uh, uh, wet, dry. I can, I can do full range speakers or guitar speakers. So what happens, sorry, I might have missed something. So what happens if someone wants two speakers powered on stage? Yeah, then what you would do is to use one of the, the built-in power amp yeah. here and get one extra small one. Okay, I yeah. see. Okay. And then that's, that's yeah. the, the smallest uh, way to get this thing in stereo. Yeah, great. And, and, that's, the, and that's still going to be a small rig that's Absolutely. going to be easily yeah. portable. And my expansion wings probably can hold oh, that. That's great. So you, you don't have to have a, full, a, a a pedal board again, so this will be the, become your pedal board. Well. So, do you think you'll do that? Like, have another? I, it's on my wish list. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, you got enough to but worry uh, about. Yeah. The, the problem is one product has to follow another. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. Of course. And my team is small, but it's on my wish list we, because we have the technology. It's basically we can do it in, yeah. in in this kind of format, a little bit thicker. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so last in the chain is is the reverb, is it on the on the effects? Yeah. Okay. And then the final stage, uh, which is the option, is the digital speaker simulation, which, as I told you, is, is like uh, I have five running at the same time, yeah. and they can be assigned to any of the outputs in any manner, which means I can have five cabinets on whatever, on, on the one output here, or on the stereo, or I have one for each uh, output. And just that make, makes me future ready also for FR, FR cabinets. Yeah. Which I'm not convinced at this point, mm -hmm. but if I have more time, I will have a look on this. Maybe I come up with something that would please me and then it makes, yeah, but I have the option already. Yeah. It's already implemented in the system. And one more thing is important. The XLR line outs do have already transformers built in, which means no DI box required. You know, I'm a gigging musician. It needs to be fast, yeah. totally reliable, and no problem. Yeah. And I, I see so many things that go wrong, and everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Yeah. And and so XLR in works. Yeah. Absolutely Done. fantastic. I don't think there's anything more I need to know. It's absolutely amazing because it's the first time I've seen it in the flesh, obviously. Ah, okay. But obviously, you know, obviously I've tried yeah. that and they're yeah, the ones, yeah. uh, absolutely fantastic. You know, everyone that comes on the channel always says, you know, always talks about the, the Amp 1 and stuff, but, but really excited to get the Amp X out. And um, Thomas, always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Big, big pleasure. Yeah. And what a great channel that is. Oh, thanks, Tom. No, I watch you guys uh, more often than you think. Well, <laughs> do you know our live show? Our live show comes just after your live show, so I get and I get the end of your live show, and I have to and I have to quickly switch over to ours. Yeah, and I watch <laughs> yours like a, le a week later or the week. Ah, oh, cheers, yeah. Thomas. Cool. Anyway, so thank cool. you, Tom. So I'm Paul from the Studio Rats. This is Thomas and the Ampex, and uh, we're all looking forward to this coming out. Yeah. So be patient and wait to be finished this year because it will be right and it's worth the wait. It is definitely worth the wait. It's amazing. Anyway, see you next time.